Hey, hello. So I'm in Gwynedd Forest today in, in North Wales. And yeah, we're going to set the record straight on a few things. By which, of course, I mean the early workings of the Gwynedd Forest. What, did you think that was any gossip? <laughs> no, maybe we'll leave that for another day. But yeah, so I obviously often go to Mid Wales and then often, probably more often, I'm in North Wales. And I keep going on and on and on about the older workings, because obviously that's what I'm more interested in. The older the better, the more history there is. Um, but the truth is, is that in North Wales, it's actually a lot harder to find really old workings. So there's plenty of stuff, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of artifacts and some good industrial archaeology. But if you want to find things like coffin levels, um, if you want to find, you know, sort of um, really, really old workings pre, um, pre 18th century, especially um, so like 17th century. So, um, you know, 16, 1600s, um, it's actually pretty hard. And it's not to say that these workings didn't exist. It's just that they probably were worked over um, where the, the loads were really good. So then in latter years, it was all developed. Whereas in mid-Wales, more of that remains, so maybe there was less activity, was less populous in the 19th century, which is good for me because I can uncover more workings. Well, nonetheless, let's talk about North Wales. And I'm in Gwydera Forest, which is sort of the birthplace of, of, of mining in the 17th century in North Wales. So it's a really, um, it's a really exciting place. It's really beautiful. Uh, it's really good for walking. And there's just mines dotted around everywhere. So if we can't find things like coffin levels, um, you know, if, if you can't carbon date things and say, oh yeah, this was from that age, what can you do? Well, so in the, the, you, you really have to look at the earliest documentation. Um, so when it comes to here, there is a bit of evidence. So one of the first people who um, who had a documented interest and, and made attempts at mining was Sir John Wynne of Gwydir and he was born in 1553 so that's a long time ago um, so his his mining sort of it would have it would have been the the latter part so maybe um, sort of you know when he was adult so the the, the last few decades of 16th century and then into the 17th century. Now, meanwhile, in Mid Wales, you might know uh, of Sir Hugh Middleton, who was one of the famous miners, mine owners. And in fact, there is a letter around 1607, I believe, um, where Sir John Wynne actually reaches out to to Sir Middleton asking about mining, you know, he's asking about the matters of mining, he's inquiring about the, the matters of minerals, how it all works, and, and, so, and, and then those two converse, and essentially they become the sort of, you know, the most famous um, mine owners at the time, of the time. Now, when it comes to Middleton, there's plenty of adits, there's plenty of workings in North Wales, some of those that I filmed, um, so we know, we know quite a lot about him. Um, but yeah, when it comes to Sir Wynne of Gwydard, it's, it's, you know, less is known. Now, so we don't actually know whereabouts in the forest that he was mining, but we're going to have a look at one place today where we think, I think, um, that could have been his, his first place of workings. My wellies are really dirty, so I think I'm going to have to find some grass or something to, maybe some moss to wipe them down. Oh, there's a good one. A mossy, mossy bank. <laughs> so the thing is with old workings is that we can tell that they're really old workings because anything pre 18th century, so 16, um, 1600s, they're all hand-picked, so it's, it's really easy, you know, that's where you get these coffin levels and, and, and hand-picked workings. 
Now, the issue with here, with Gwydir, is that there was almost a hundred years where there was very little interest in mining, so the activity sort of stopped. Now, considering that the, that, you know, the hand-picked levels, they used to be tiny, they used to be really small, um, and it only takes a little while, it only takes 10, 20 years for the moss, the trees, the debris, uh, the silt, um, to completely obscure the entries. So potentially there are workings all around us that we just don't know that they're underneath our feet or, or potentially obliterated by forestry, by the building of new roads. Um, but that's what happened. So, um, so when Sir John Wynne died in 1627, um, then subsequently his, his relatives, so his heirs, took over some of the activity and that continued till about um, 1670s or so. Um, but then, yeah, so from about 1670s to about 1750s, there, there was just hardly any activity, or, or, or at least nothing that's been documented. Um, which, of course, you know, within that period of time, it's almost 100 years, a lot of workings could have been lost. And, you know, there would have been some documentation, I would imagine, back in the day, but if it was lost in personal archives, maybe burned, you know, houses notoriously used to burn down back in the day, we just don't know, we just don't have the records. One good thing is about Gwydir Forest is that because it's so well established, it's such an old forest, um, there are a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> so if you ever, you'll never go hungry if you're here. Oh my God, look at these puffballs. They're everywhere like little beacons. But the reason I came in here is because there's a, there's a set hiding there. The king of all mushrooms. Here he is. Oh, it's a big one. Wow. Look at that. That's edible. This is when you buy in shops porcini. That's what they are. So just here on the right, straight away, there's loads of um, waste piles. <sighs> Spoil tips. Really nicely mossy. Um, grown over with moss and lichen. Uh, so these are the later workings of the area um, and you can imagine with a scale like that had there been some older workings underneath they could have easily been buried. Um, that's the sort of landscape that you're dealing with so if you wanted to uncover them even if you knew exactly where they were it would be really tricky. There's the ruins of the old mine office not much remains of it so we carry on. Is in nature amazing coral fungus. So the reason we think this area is potentially where Sir John Wynne started his explorations is because there was mention of a pool, sort of like a reservoir or a lake, um, and indeed over there we have Fleen Pankraig, which could have been the one um, that that area matches up. Um, and in fact, later on, there, there are descriptions where not only they talk of these older workings, but they also mention Roman rakes. And Roman rakes essentially refer to old Roman workings, so actual Roman workings, where Romans would dig sort of trenches, rakes if you like, um, where they would hush it out with water, so it was this hushing method they used um, and, and they would be quite long you know you could have a hundred meters worth of um, of this rake where they would essentially extract the ore where it was fairly close to the surface you know Romans were very clever so if there was an easy way to extract something they would um, they'd be the first one to do it. We're going to look out for these rakes and we're going to try and find the Roman rakes. So there are a few difficulties tracking down um, these workings. So first of all, where this pool was um, in this of this pool mine, now it's not really a pool, it's not really a reservoir. And obviously after the drought of a summer we had, there's even less chance of any water being in there. But essentially this, this entire area, that's, that's the area of the pool. Um, now very much dried up and you can see there's also some spoil heaps over there. Um, but even more challenging is finding the Roman rakes because they should be somewhere in there and, and the, entire, the entire bank, you know, even if they're there, 
I mean, <laughs> good luck with that. Even though I hear that they were quite extensive, you know, we're talking like 100 meters or so. But mm, I don't know about that. So let's see if we can track down any of those Roman rakes in this shrubbery. Are they hiding? Could this be it, I wonder? Because that is a bit of a, uh, a gap. Ooh, ouch, gorse. Ooh, ow, ow, ow. That is a bit of a cut in the rocks. I think that might be it. Mm. Yeah, so this is a definite cut in the ground. It's a shame that the, you know, you can't really see the banks are are so mossy and overgrown, you really can't see any features, you know, what it, what is it like? Um, oops. Oh, I see it's deeper than it, <laughs> than it seems, you know, you can't see how, that, you know, is it just rocky? Is, it, is the rock sort of cut clean? Um, is, is there some kind of built up structure? It really is hard to tell. But the other thing is, you see, if, if indeed there was a lead vein, that that would be breaking out to surface then potentially that would be full of loose material that they could have just washed out and actually then then it doesn't have to there doesn't have to be that much evidence of you know chiseling away some kind of you know cutting a uh, an actual man-made feature it, it could literally be them scraping out washing out anything that's there and just leaving this pre-natural natural ravine you know what's left of it there's a better view of this and actually climbing up here you realize that that yes there's this ravine here but you're standing on top of a, what looks like a spoil heap and actually this material it, it that that can't be dating back to roman times i mean look look at that spoil heap there i mean that that seems pretty sort of recent you know can't be a <laughs> can't be two thousand years old can it and in later years in particular, when workings became a bit more sophisticated, the reason having a lake was so important, um, because mine workings used to get flooded as soon as you dig a shaft, if you want to go fairly um, low underground, unlike the Romans who would mainly work the surface, um, you know, the workings would get flooded. So what do you do if it gets flooded? You fight it with more water. <laughs> so they would, um, they would, run these leaks, so these water channels from from lakes, from reservoirs. Sometimes they would make reservoirs for that purpose. Um, I don't know if this was man-made, you know, if it was referred to, um, far back, so maybe maybe it's a natural um, lake. Um, and they would run these leaks that would then feed water wheels. Um, there are some water wheel sites around the, around the area, um, which would then power the, the pump rods within the shaft and the water could get pumped out. Um, and this here, in fact, just behind me, this was the channel. So if the lake is over there, all that area there, this is the channel that was running from that lake over there, over. Um, and in fact, then over there, there's an entire line of shafts running that way. Um, we can still see some of them even in the, in the shrubbery. The leak system was quite extensive. So, in fact, they actually cut out one of the drainage channels right into the rock. I really love this one. It's just right here. You can see where it starts. It's almost like a culvert that goes under. Um, and then here, it's a, it's a proper, proper cut that goes out through there. So it's cut out in the rocks. Um, some of the, I think it's sort of like almost... Um, you know, they built they built up a a wall, uh, but yeah, it's, it's really really straight. Uh, it's quite deep as well. You know, it's like a, over a meter depth. You, you, you know, you climb out, but it's you wouldn't want to fall inside there necessarily. <laughs> yeah, this is the brilliant brilliant example of of a, of a leap. Well, more of a leap. That is more than a leap. This is a, a proper cut in the rocks for a drainage channel. Serious business. The leak carries on really far into the woods actually. It gets quite dense eventually and it's eroded a little bit here. But it does it does carry on. And here the leak widens quite a bit. And there 
it goes underground. There's a culvert. Now this is not far from the wheel pit site, but I don't know if if we can actually dra track down the wheel pit itself. So this is where it disappears underground. And this, I mean this actually, this could be the wheel pit. So you see how badly, yeah, so it could be sort of like that and carries on all that way. Let's see if we can track it down <laughs> without falling through inside. Yeah, ah, that, that's really nice. So interesting. I wonder whether this is the sort of either the beginning of the wheel pit and, and this, this is the only bit that remains because that's definitely some squared squared structure. I mean, it could be the, the continuation of that of the channel that way because in fact it does it does sort of continue oh, okay and what do we have there yeah that's a there's an area there sort of cleared out so whether this was the old site just a uh, 10 meters up and then you can see how the, the channel continues but then it goes really upwards, so that wouldn't quite make sense. You know, leaps, they have a really gentle slope, as you can imagine. But yeah, no, there's definitely a channel. Probably connects back to the other leaps over there. The one we saw initially, which was um, over that side. Yeah, so it's not easy to track down the old features. You can see why now. You know, even if you find something, you don't know how old it is. Could have been older, even older. Um, and even if there were some Roman remains anywhere, or sort of, you know, uh, medieval Elizabethan remains, then it's quite li high likelihood if people knew about them, that was documented, is that later mine companies would have, would have worked that again. So, you know, and, and obviously with the nowadays with the forestry, <laughs> It's really, really difficult, but you know, we've given it a go. Um, and just behind me, people have built a lot of um, sort of like good luck cairns. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> so <laughs> there's for you for good luck. And, um, but yeah, thanks for joining me. That was still a good walk. Slightly soggy, slightly rainy, but you know, North Wales, what can you do? And uh, yeah, do do subscribe, click the notification bell for, for, for notifications. And um, yeah, I'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now. Bye. People are still pagan when you think about it. Look at these. <laughs> Aren't they lovely?